I see it. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, do you have any specific thoughts about these games? I know you said you played nine games and you really struggled with the Sheik matchup. Yeah. I think I won maybe three or four. I think I won three. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was trying pretty hard. Like I like, I you know I was obviously playing to learn a little bit, especially with like, um, the main thing I was trying to uh, do was camp the platforms a little bit more because okay. I know that like, like Mason likes to play on the platforms, and a lot of times he would jump to the top platform, and I like noticed I could get a lot of punishes off of catching him going to top platform. Okay. So I, that's the only thing I feel like I really experimented with more than I usually would. Sure. I mean, yeah, um, I think it's worth to work on, like, one thing at a time, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, um, any, like, ideas? Because I know that, you know, we talked a little bit about, like, picking out replays kind of, like, specifically. Mm-hmm. Was there a... Uh, was there a so like what specific things uh did you think went wrong um uh honestly like um okay one thing one thing i noticed for sure is i would jump in with laser a lot and he would like full hop fair me Mm -hmm. um a lot of like what i struggle with against sheik is just, I feel like she just gets to hit my shield for free, mm-hmm. and there's nothing I can do about it. And I so I feel like, I feel like I'm always on the defensive in a matchup where it feels where like typically, um, it seems like Falco aggresses a lot. So I think in these matches, it was really hard for me to get my punishes off, and Mason just kind of had control the whole time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so likely what uh, I'm gonna do. Uh, this is something that I stole from Drug Fox, and uh, since obviously it's been a while since I watched you play, and I do this with uh, I did this with Crow last time too, uh, is probably just gonna watch like the first game straight through, and uh, you know I'm just gonna like use it to try to get a feel of how you play, and just try to see what happened in that game, and mm-hmm. you can also just watch it straight through, of course. And at the end of it, we're going to go back and then we're going to compare notes and see what each of us noticed. Okay. Um, let me just say, I'm also like, like very not looking forward to see myself play. I'm like, oh my god. Like, I'm, I'm like very prepared for this to be horrifying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely sympathize. Like, especially with games and like tournament sets that you lose. It can be really hard to watch them because it's just like... Uh, you know, it's a thing where it's like whenever you're, whenever you're playing, you're like, yeah, like you know, I'm hitting these punishes, I'm moving around kind of fast, and then if mm-hmm. you watch your gameplay back, you're just like, oh my god, like yeah. I'm so awful, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's really how it feels. I definitely feel that. Like you know, I I definitely had games where like, man, I played so well, and then I watch it back, and it's like, drop every punish, like. I move. I'm moving just like painfully slowly, and I'm just like Jesus. Like, how did I ever think I was playing like well in any sort of like absolute sense at all? You know, right, right. Yeah, but it's totally feel that. also. I mean, and you know, this is just like some shit that you kind of have to get over. Uh, you know, like I've heard tell that you know Zane watches his sets like right after he loses like right after he loses which is like completely insane oh my god yeah and uh, i actually have done that before like like i get home after the tournament and yeah. i like immediately watch it yeah i've yeah. done that and it hurts dude but you yeah know, it's like stuff that you also kind of kind of have to do you know like after like the did you watch the run or rumble crew battle between oh uh, uh, i watched i watched part of it yeah so you know you watch the end where Magi lost the mango right right and uh you know that night like literally after after that like she sat down and she like 
she just watched it like three or four times dude oh like, my god she watched it from like mango's pov and then she watched it from like homemade waffles pov and then she watched <laughs> it from like some other stream was like no you really don't have to do this to yourself and yeah. she's like yes i do <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you know, just, uh, I mean, you know, it's something you have to do. It just sucks. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we're gonna just watch this straight through now. Alright. Oh, uh, I guess I gotta open that replay back up. I cut it too close to the... Yeah, oh, I see. see. Okay, cool. So, uh, what all did you notice? Um, okay, I didn't, like, really ledge dash. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, I, like, have the tech skill to do, but I'm just lazy sometimes. I don't sure. do it. Um, when I came down... When I was coming down with invincibility, a lot of times I like, like just kind of didn't pressure him. Just like gave him the ledge. I that's one thing I'm kind of unsure about that I wanted to ask you about. Mm -hmm. My shield pressure was like kind of dog shit. Like every time he was shielding, he kind of just got out for free. I never grabbed him. Um, I never like even like really gave him a reason to roll. I usually eventually just eventually I either just hit his shield. And he was able to wait and like escape or counterattack, um, or he was just able to wave dash out because I was giving him space. And then, um, like sometimes there'd be like he's above me on the platform, and it feels like I can go for maybe like some up airs or um, catch him falling off the platform. But I'm just so scared of Mason on the platforms, I just like run away and just pretty much. Let him decide if he wants to go to the top platform or if he wants to like drop down the stage. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, yeah. Those are the main things. Yeah, so, like, one of the side platform thing is definitely something I noticed a lot. Uh, not ledge dashing, it's like, uh, yeah, that was a thing, but I also felt like you just weren't on the ledge, like, very much at all. And a lot that, of times it's like, you... I mean, you you would, like, side be a little bit low, right? And they that probably happened uh, at least twice that game that I can remember. So we'll probably talk a little bit about that. Uh, but definitely, mm-hmm. like, I want to look at the, the platform stuff because uh, from what I was seeing, you were getting hit a lot uh, coming off of the platforms and uh, you did get opened up at least once from him coming off the platform. So that's something I'm going to want to look for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like there's a spot where you're like actively hunting him, dropping through the platform, which is pretty good. Uh, it's too bad that you're just like a little bit not spaced. So I guess the question here is like, so he runs off. I should find a better frame to pause this on here. So right here. So actually, uh, I would say probably if you up tilted right here then you're ideally situated to catch a lazy runoff. But you actually walk a little bit to the left here, you see that? I see, yeah, I see it. And then you see whenever he fares, like, hilariously enough, this is this little adjustment is exactly enough to not catch him. Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, there's kind of a question here. Like, do you think that uh, you walked here because you figured, oh, like, this is where Sheik's going to end up? Or do you think... Uh, or do you think that, oh, maybe you didn't mean to walk? I, th- I think it was a positioning. Like, I think I'm just not familiar with where I need to be to not get hit by fair, but for the up tilt to also land. Yeah. Because there is a spacing where you can be too close, and the fair does hit before the up tilt comes out. Yeah. But in some of those cases, a lot of times it's just like, if you're going to make a read like that, sometimes it's acceptable to just be like, okay, I'm going to up tilt earlier, right? Right. Because if your up tilt's already out, then it's just going to hit her. The alternative thing you could do, if you're uncertain about this, is you could position probably back here, or like right here, and then if mm-hmm. she runs off with a needle or an aerial, then you could laser her landing, and then you could uh, just like play play hits on her landing instead. Right. But the fact. And that then you... also, go ahead. Like that's a good risk for me to take. Like, because like if he gets the fair, like, like. Well, actually, like if he gets the fair, he might get a grab off of it, right? Or oh. do I get to SDI down roll away at this percent? Uh, fair certainly will not knock you down at zero, but it should be fine for you to be able to crash cancel it. This is definitely right. like down holding percent, where if he fares you at zero and it's not space, you can definitely crouch cancel to punish him. Uh-huh. Like, can, can he space the fair, though, so that I can't CC shine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, shine is really small, so you won't always get the shine. But, uh, you know, you could go for, like, a crash cancel grab, or you might be able to, like, CC down air as a mix-up or something instead. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree that you don't always get the shine. uh, Right. Because, just because, like, shine's really small. They have to be, like, really far inside you for you to get CC shine, as I'm sure Mm -hmm. you know. But it's not your only option out of crash cancel. Right. I guess my point is, is that, like... Even if I like mess up the timing or mess up the spacing, and he does get the fair, it's still a good risk for me to take because I get a lot more off the up tilt than he would off the fair. Yeah, and yeah, CC up tilt is also a thing, by the way. But yeah, so this distance is really something that you needed to be more familiar with. Where it's like, oh, if they're gonna run off, like how far can she go? She's gonna run off, like, uh, and it's to just right here, right? As you can that's see. like the max distance he's like holding forward as far as he can yeah this is him going full forward right like give right. Him another look you know right he's just yeah, running yeah, yeah. fully forward so that's exactly as far as he can get uh, yeah, he didn't even time that farewell it looks like yeah i mean he was just running off and fairing because you were right there right right so yeah that's definitely uh, a spot and this is something that, you know, you might not uh, be used to, but it's really easy for you to figure out if you want to, to, like, look at it a little bit. All you have to do, right, is, like, pick Sheik and Uncle Punch and run off some platforms with aerials. And then you'd mm-hmm. be like, oh, I can get to right about here. 
like you can see here, Sheik's landing is like, uh, like the back of her foot would be really close to like this yellow line or whatever, and then that would be like a metric right. that you could use. Okay, so this is going to be a spot that... So, like, this kind of stuff is uh, something that also got you in a bit of trouble. So I'm going to zoom way back here and uh, point out something similar. So, right here, you do this you do this aerial off the side platform a whole lot. And mm -hmm. right here, it works out because, you know... But he was actually blatantly reading this aerial, by the way. He just messed up his execution. Look what... You, right. Like, do you remember what he was doing as you were trying to do this aerial? No. All right, so watch his character and tell me what he was doing. Oh, uh, he was trying to sh he was trying to shield, and he's trying to like narrow out or something. Yeah, he I think he was actually trying to up air. I think he was uh, okay. trying to hard call you out up air. Let me pause it and. Uh huh. Which he didn't even need to do. You could just hold shield and that like shield grab that. Yeah, if you do the aerial so early, you can. But if you did the aerial, which I did, it would be safer. Yeah. Which he's not necessarily going to be able to react to. So you know, you just caught him out of his jump. But if he had, like, you know, if he had gotten his aerial out, then it would have been fine. And he uh -huh. even, like, yeah, he even spot dodged here. He might have been able to just DI down to the ground after this down air and then grab right. you. Right. Yeah, but, he probably could have. Yeah, it was like, so you do this type of aerial off the side platform a lot. And uh, the fact that you're always looking to push forward like this off the side platform puts you, gets you in a lot of trouble. So, right. I'll show you the next situation where it comes up. So, I guess, what should I do instead of, like, jump off? Yeah. Like, um, Magi has this great graphic in Nerd Talk. I've seen that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah. seen it. So, let's do from Magi. What? From... Why can't I... In... Nerd talk from SSB Magi in whatever it's a nerd talk. <sighs> I'm just gonna scroll up and find it because I want to. I really want to make sure that you understand uh, the graphic and like probably really work on uh, the stuff, the ideas that are presented in it because. You know, this is like what gets every Falco player murdered on netplay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, great. Here it is. Here it is. So this graphic, uh, I'm just going to do this one instead of like her explanation. Um, you can see how here Fox is right here on the top platform. And these blue lines are very narrow. They they represent uh, where Fox's threat range is, right? Similar to where from right here similar to like where Sheik ran off and it's like just like a slight diagonal down right mm -hmm. uh so fox can extend a hitbox anywhere within this blue area so that means uh if hungry box wants to be safe and not get hit uh he should stand in the green area so that or float in the green area whatever so that he can do like a whiff punish right yeah so this means that it's very very safe for fox to run off the right side and just go over here because hungry box has to be over here and he can't mm -hmm. so fox can dislodge himself from uh, a kind of bad top platform situation quite easily right so in that side platform like situation like maybe i go for like a shield drop laser yeah shield um, drop laser is an excellent example right so let's let's show this example where you get fucked up for like always pushing forward off the side platform. I believe it's coming uh -huh. up soon. For right here, it's actually right here. So I'm gonna back up uh, to right before it. So in this situation, what we're going to see a lot is you get up air onto this, and then you land right here, and you're very insistent. You're like, no, I have to like come forward off of this platform. Uh -huh. I am I am attacking you. 
and right. you just get hit like a million times for it, which is what he was trying to do the first time when he went down arrow. So look at this. So he back airs you, and then you try to CC shine, and then you land, and then you come down, and you try to come down even more. Uh huh. So uh, maybe it was a different spot, and I guess you didn't get hit for it as much as I thought you did. But uh, so let's look at this. Uh, so what could we have done here to not get hit by this back air for free, right? Well, let's think about this. Right now, your threat range is you can jump off this side platform down air, which probably puts you like right around here, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Or you can run off and down air, or you could shield drop and down air. So this is like your maximum threat range. Meaning if he right. wants to play outside of these by playing dash back, then he needs to be over here, which makes you dropping through and shooting a laser here very safe. Right. Now, as it happens, he actually goes to aggressively stuff you because he knows that he just hit you with an up air so that uh, you're caught, you're more on the back foot, so you can push a little bit more. Right. But uh, if you had just, like, shielded here and then waited for an opportunity with flight and just, like, fall through this way and laser, then you would have been fine. And there are a lot of spots where this could have turned out even worse for you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you did a good job actually going to top platform. So that's like an example of uh, an escaping from the side platform situation. Or just like, not always just like mindlessly doing this area off the platform. Right. I do so, want you to keep looking for it because it's going to happen multiple times across this game. So if he's like playing inside that threat range, should I assume he's like trying to come up and hit me or like trying to fish for me to come down at him uh it depends on i would say it depends a lot on what he's been doing uh i would say i'd say like if he's sometimes they just get hit which is why like it feels so good to do right and but, against like you know when i'm spamming unranked against shitty players i do that all day which is why that feels super free it's like oh yeah like i've been in the spot before yeah and it's just like i mean oh i'm falcon i'm down here it's fine uh -huh. uh, and it's like, you know, if they're like more like, I mean, if they demonstrate that they're just going to get hit by it, then, you know, whatever. But if they're like kind of like towards the tail end of that, uh, then, you know, like look at where Hungrybox is in this picture, right? You can see mm -hmm. how he's very clearly like jumping towards the tail end. He could drift back. So if Leffen comes down right here, he's going to get punished. Right. So it really depends a lot on like their positioning, like can how easily can they escape, like how afraid am I of getting stuffed like trying to come down. Yeah, see, same thing. This right, is the right, side right. platform, but you're basically standing right in it and you know, he's like in the middle of your range. But he's just like literally just like you know, he's even like charging out Smash and wanting you to fall through. You just like fall through and get and get hit right here. So, yeah, that's a good example. That's good patience. Yeah, so that was uh, one of that was the first missed side B. And that also yeah. happens multiple times. So do you think you missed that side B just because, like... I mean, probably when you did this side B, you were aware that was too low, right? Yeah. Um, I think I think it was just a bad time to side B. I should have gone for the up, like for an up B for sure, because that nair was at a point where like I definitely had to go for a low side B to avoid getting hit by the nair. Yeah. But my j double jump was just at such a weird height where that timing just became like like really hard where I had to wait till the very last second and then side B. So I definitely should have just up B, which. I I need to up pee more in general. I've been like saying that to myself for years now, but um, yeah, I think the move there was just to up pee. Okay, cool. I mean, I just really wanted to make sure that uh, you knew the side was gonna miss. So yeah, this is uh this is another this is actually an input error. Uh, you actually had a lot of trouble with your inputs to get off the side platform. This is the spot mm -hmm. where you do this down air, right? And then, I mean, you down smash, but you're trying to, like, fall through down air again, right? Uh-huh. But he's, like, already kind of shielding, getting ready. Right, right. 
So again, this is uh, once again just like you trying to pick like the fastest option to get off the side platform. Mm -hmm. Just great. He did a nice job with reacting with that grab. And you know, you see, he does it too. And Justin does this too. Everybody does this all the time. What's he do? Just run off with the aerial. Uh huh. So if I could have held, I could have held shield there. Yeah, I mean, if you could have held shield, you could have backed up a little bit. You could have up tilted. You could have, uh, hell, you could have even up smashed. Just like anything, you know, if you open your mind and you just look for this, you'll see people do it constantly. And you can mm -hmm. really punish people for this. And Falco is kind of unique because I think Falco is actually uh, one of the best characters at coming off the platforms because his down air is so scary that it makes like people space farther away from it, which gives him the ability to like come off the platform with the laser instead. And right. anytime you can get a laser at that kind of distance, a lot of times it'll turn into a favorable mix-up for you. Yeah. But yeah, you see he does the same thing. I mean, he is wave landed to the side platform, so it's a little bit different. So this is another one, right? You, this is the same thing. This is top platform, side platform. He's like blatantly like standing right mm -hmm. here, you know? He mm -hmm. has a lot of times to react, but you still like obligingly gave him this down here. Right. Really easy. No, I can I can just shield drop and laser him all the way down, and then I have space, and I'm the one forcing him to come down. Yeah, exactly. And then you just get whiff punish for it, and he doesn't even whiff punish you that hard. Yeah. But you can clearly see that's something that he's abusing a lot here. I think it was a mistake to shoot lasers here, personally. I'm not a Falco player, but right here, uh, I think it was wrong for you to, like, turn around and turn around with these lasers. Right here, I wanted to see either, like, uh, let me back up. Right here, I wanted to see either a double jump read uh, up or, like, just come here, especially after right here. Maybe read a double jump with back air right here. Uh huh. But that's just like, I've watched Magi play like so much, I'm like, oh, this is where a double jump for each should go. Um, the reason why I don't, but the main thing is like, uh, I don't like turning around here that much because I think that walling Sheik like this, just having your back to her whenever she's in the corner. And she's like above you is really good because just like you know your back air will kind of hit this way and your up tilt will hit this way mm -hmm. so it's gonna be like if she wants to like try to come back onto the stage more greedily you can just really abuse and blow up for it and, you know people just like double jump fair out of hit stun all the time so something mm -hmm. you can really abuse whereas like if you turn around and you shoot these lasers or even if you like turn around you don't shoot the lasers then suddenly like covering her like just double jumping at you becomes so much more difficult. You know, you have to like preemptively nair instead or something, but you still might lose just because of how fast forward it is. But if you stay with mm -hmm. your back turn, then it's like probably like you, you could just auto cancel Barrett. Mm -hmm. uh, so did you mean to? Surely you meant to land here, right? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Okay. And then and then I tried to snipe, side B snap the ledge on him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the side B was, like, the be obviously, like, the best choice to do, like, once you were there, right? Yeah. Now, so... That, oh my god, that spot made me so mad. I was, like... I didn't, like... Like, once it, once once that happened, I was like, wow, he can do it that fast? I yeah. was like, <laughs> at that distance, he hits me there? Oh yeah. my god. She's really fast, so, uh, yeah. he blocks the laser. Uh, do you know, like, the frame data on laser and stuff? I do not. Okay, so, basically, uh, Falco's jump squad is 5 frames. And, uh, once he's airborne, like, the, uh, and you press B, laser takes 13 frames to come out. Which is a lot longer, probably, than you realized it was. Basically, like, laser is, like, actually super duper slow. 
Right. So that means if you're grounded, the fastest laser you can get out is a uh, fucking 18 frames. It takes 18 frames to get the yeah. high, earliest possible laser out. Now, uh, once she... Now, laser is like plus two on shield or something. So, like, when she blocked, she has all of that time. Because you just landed... So she shields this, uh -huh. and then you jump, and you shoot this laser, and then you have to land. So even if right. this is the earliest laser, and you like, and I'm being like fuzzy on my math here, but like, let's say that you somehow shoot the highest laser, but then you immediately touch the ground after that laser, then uh, that's 18 frames for the laser to come out, then you have landing land canceling. So then that's like, uh, we're up to, I think, 20 frames now. Yeah, so we're yeah. up to 20 it's, frames. It's just an eternity. Yeah. Yeah. And then you started, you, did you see what happened when you got hit? Yeah, yeah. I was I was starting up another laser. Yeah, right? exactly. Well spotted. See, you're you're actually in yeah. top spot. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I mean, just like, it shouldn't be hugely surprising that she should have the time to do that. Right. And so, like, aware of that. so... Can you go back? Can you go back to yeah, that yeah, spot? Yeah. Uh, play? Oh, come on. Okay, yeah. So in this in this situation right here, so like... So should I try to like attack her shield? Is Was the mistake that I hit her shield once with laser and then lasered a second time? And that's just kind of giving him too much room? Um, I think... But yeah, I, I kind of think that, like, right here, so the difference between shielding a laser, I mean, I guess I should ask you this question. Like, do you understand, like, the main differences between shielding a laser and, like, tanking a laser? Uh, I probably couldn't articulate them. I know they feel different in game, but I couldn't really tell you. Sure. So, well, what I'm specifically looking for is, like, how they affect, like, uh, your the, the opponent's post-laser option. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I, I would guess it's easier to jump afterwards when you block a laser, and then it's easier to, to dash afterwards when you get hit by a laser. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, uh, whenever you block a laser, you get less hit stun uh, because you're blocking. Just gen in general, whenever you block, you get less stun. Shield stun is right. less than hit stun. So, that means you can act more quickly, uh, like you said, a jump or anything that involves a jump, like a wave dash. So, right. uh, once you see Sheik get shield this laser, well, on the other hand, if you tank the laser, then you have more options, but they come out a little more slowly. You know, like, you have mm -hmm. access to, like, dashing or doing a jab or a tilt. So, if Sheik is right here and she shields this laser, then uh, ideally, and this is very hard, but you should be able to notice, oh, she's blocking this laser. So, uh, what's she going to... What's she doing? Like, if she blocks a laser, then suddenly her options become much more defined, right? She's either going to jump and, like, wave land this platform, or she's going to keep holding shield, or she's going to wave dash in either direction. Right. So having so laser like... her on shield, you should pick your next option to be one of those things. Right. So do you think, like... So should I, I should I have like laser dash backed or like I don't know I guess my I guess my my question is like like what's the mix up here like mm -hmm. once once when I at this kind of range shoot a laser and Sheik blocks it mm -hmm. um what am I looking for uh so after you block you so if I'm Sheik in this situation. Uh, I probably want to... I'm either going to read Falco, like, coming in with, an, with an, a hitbox right after a laser, and I'm going to narrow out a shield, or I'm going to wave land to the side platform, which is what Mason did. So, mm -hmm. uh, laser dashback obviously beats the, the narrow out of shield. And, uh, going to, and it probably also, like, is just safe against uh, the wave land shenanigans, too. 
Mm -hmm. so laser dashback was an excellent example if you wanted if you wanted to read him going to the side platform then you could have just like lasered and then just like neared Mm -hmm. right here just like full hop neared at him and that would have worked great it probably would have killed him if you're willing to make that read which i think i I think i think it's mason against mason that's he loves his platform so i think that's a good thing to look for yeah i think it's totally reasonable read to make uh I mean, Justin does that a lot. She players just like, really like taking to the platform to try to escape the corner. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, so right here, you just like kind of let yeah. you know, walk up on you, right? Yeah. Uh, I bet you probably felt kind of awkward because you're like, oh shit, I got hit by this needle. And then, uh, I mean, this is just a disaster from here. I mean, up yeah. is an amazing move. So really, <laughs> what you could have done from here is just like, I mean, you know, you could like really, no one can take advantage of like these, this platform layout like Falcon can. So yeah. on, your, on your opponent's invincible, you can make things really hard for them just like by doing like weird full hops and wave lands around the platform. Yeah, I'm usually really good about that. I usually like... Spam the fuck out of full hop on invincibility. Yeah. It's super good. Also, I've been going to ledge. I've been experimenting with going to ledge during invincibility just to practice my yeah, ledge dashes. Makes sense. By the way, uh, this pop up on the dash attack doesn't have to happen to you. Uh, you can hold down on the C stick. There's no reason not to hold down during on the C stick during while you're getting tech chased. Uh huh. Uh, if you had done that, then this would have you would have ground tech right, and then you could have just tech rolled in the direction instead of getting popped up like this. Mm-hmm. And you okay. could have done it again here. Uh, dash tech does not pop start popping you up until pretty late. Um, do you know how to use any data? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, let me show you. So I need data. So this is really useful. Um. We're going to say the attacker is Sheik, and she's doing a clean dash attack. Great. Uh, and we're going to say we're Falco. Uh, so this is going to like tell you the knockback and tells you last frame hit stun. All very nice. So let's do an ASDI down input and uh, trajectory DI. Let's just say your tech rolling. We're going to say a direction. Uh, so let's lower this so you can see up until 64 so 63 is the last percent where you can on the tech and that's just with the yellow stick down right this is even Uh like good di with the gray stick this is just holding a direction right so if you hold this yellow stick down then and they dash attack you at anywhere below 63 then you should be able to just like you should just be able to force them into uh, a subsequent tech situation, which will be harder for them to do because they dash attack instead of just like doing something with lower end lag. Right. So I guess I just need to get used to that because like it feels awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. I usually I usually ASDI like just with the gray stick, like that's yeah. usually where I get most of my stuff with. But I guess it's just awkward because I feel like what if like he misses the tech chase and now like i'm sitting here like holding down on the yellow stick and now like i can't like jump i can't you know like hit a and that like i don't know that just feels awkward but i guess i like it's possible to just i don't know get used to that yeah it's something that it's definitely something you would have to get used to uh it's just like it's just like while you're knocked down right because i mean if you're going to get hit anyway then you may as if you get grabbed obviously it doesn't make a difference but mm-hmm. if you get hit, then uh, it does make a difference. But if he misses the tech chase, then a lot of times, like, you would have time to react, right? Like, I mean, you could even, like, you could probably just, like, buffer a spot dodge by holding L there. It's not like I'm telling uh-huh. you that you should, but, like, you know, you're not completely deprived of options. It's just, like, you you probably just feel like, uh, you probably just feel like it while you're getting used to the motion. But I think it's right. like really huge against Sheik because it stops them from dash attacking early on in tech chases. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. Let's 
So did you mean to full hop here? This looked like an accident to me. Uh, let me see. Uh... Oh, no. That was... Oh, wait, huh. No, I think that was a multi-shine. Okay. Yeah, it was definitely a multi-shine. Because, like, that, one, to me, was a big reason... Uh, second miss, by the way. That, to me, was, like, uh, a big reason why, you know, you were talking about your shield pressure being kind of lacking. And I thought a lot of that was, like, you know, I don't think you need to do crazy shield pressure on Sheik. I think you need to just do stuff that, like, catches rolls and like nair and like beats nair and like wave that shadow shield or whatever uh mm -hmm. i think like doing crazy shield pressure is like not that good but i mean you know the question is like oh why was my shield pressure lacking and i found i thought that a lot of time your shield this game your shield pressure was kind of lacking just because like you do an input error and they get out for free mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Alright. <laughs> so, rough last stop, basically. Yeah. So, uh, what I'd like to do is just, like, you know, watch through this next game and kind of see, like, uh, how, like, you know, the same situations okay. are kind of manifesting here. Before we start, hold mm -hmm. up. I think, uh, like, in terms of, uh, like, bringing this into, like, game when I'm playing against Sheik or Mason or next, like, I should be taking notes, right? So, like, so the key takeaways from that, that game, I mean, I'm sure the stuff's gonna come up even more, but, um, stop doing, like, shitty, like, run off aerials and jump off aerials off the side platforms. Yeah. That, that was the biggest one. Um... And something that will probably help you a lot with that is, like, if... Uh, whenever you're playing unranked, you like look for your opponents to do those. Then you'll just uh -huh. like see them do it like so far oh my ahead God. of time, and you'll just yeah. like murder them for it. And you'll be like, okay, that was really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually I got better at uh, doing late aerials on shield because I started looking for shine on a shield against people on unranked. Yeah, it really helps. Like once you're like the one doing the punishing, then it really helps you kind of understand a uh, different uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, bad aerials off side platforms, and then, like, would you say I was, like, overcomplicating shield pressure? Would that be the easiest way to, like, put it in a note form? Yeah, uh, okay, so Squid had a tweet that was, like, if your shield pressure is designed to beat somebody, like, holding shield, then you also have to consider the fact that doing literally nothing also beats holding shield. So, mm -hmm. uh, your shield pressure should be, like, directed towards beating an escape option not just like hitting their shield right that, that's that's kind of the way i would put it i don't know about like you know like complicated or not it's just like the question is like whenever you do your shield pressure or you're whenever you're considering which shield pressure options you like picking you really have to consider it's like okay like what does this beat and so like you know if you think that someone's gonna roll then you should be thinking about how you're going to shield pressure their shield in a way that will catch a roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, don't, it almost felt like Mason was just waiting for me to do an input error and like get an escape. Yeah, he probably like, felt pretty comfortable in his shield. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I could, I didn't see a single grab that game for me, so I could. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll put think more about shield pressure. Um, let's see. Those are like the two biggest ones. Yeah, I think so. Like, we really talked... I mean, what we mostly talked about really was the, uh... Really was the platform aerials. And, of course, we talked a little bit about, uh... Just, like, your, your side B heights being a little uh -huh. too low on Battlefield. So, you know, that may even be something that you'll have to, like, work on a little bit in Battlefield. Work on a little bit on your own time. Which is, like, kind right. of something weird to think about. And I doubt, like... I highly doubt that's a thing that most people practice, you know, just like how low can my side B be and still grab the ledge. But like obviously right. it's important because Falco players just die from side being slightly too low all the time. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a oh my god, it's so brutal in uh Uncle Punch where you have to side B under the Marth down tilt. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I hate that. It's <laughs> really hard with Falco. It's actually. really hard. It's, it's really so hard. Up. 
Yeah, it's harder for Falco to side beat to ledge than it is for Fox, by the way. I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know it was easier for Fox. Yeah, it's like it's a lot easier for Fox. It's like ledge grab Fox is higher in his body, so he can side beat lower and then get I see. Tilt. But with Falco, it's just like, I don't grab the ledge as high for some reason, so I get hit more easily. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. All but, right. Yeah. Alright, let's see. Oh. I did see something here. So this is like kind of awkward. Where, uh, yeah, this fall. I just down smash. Oh, wait, not there. There's a, there's, there's a tech offer. Like, there's. When I dared him on the platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just down. Oh, wait, not. It wasn't even that spot. There was one spot where he like tech and placed and tried to up tilt him when I could just down smash. Yeah, right here, right here. Okay. So what I was seeing here is just like. You're. You were like a little bit behind here. Where, like, mentally speaking, where you just, like, so you down air him, and then, uh, like, you just, like, shine here. Not really sure why you shined, to be honest. Yeah, me neither. Uh, this is a pretty sloppy shine. Like, this definitely seems like you autopiloted the shine, because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think, like, you know, like, intellectually, it's like, oh, if I down air Sheik at this percent, she's going to pop up. Like, shine stops working. So it definitely feels like you just autopilot the shine, and then well, so, sometimes you pop her up and she you, she still gets hit by the shine. Which like look where her toes are. Like it does kind of feel like she's in that range, but it's like very clear when you stop it on the shine that she's not gonna yeah. get hit by it. Yeah, so, that might it, it might have it might have been a bit of both. Um, but yeah, I totally autopilot shines. Yeah, I, I think think this is an autopilot shine. I think if you were paying more attention, like. You would have probably just like nared here or something, or mm -hmm. you would have like jumped and shined or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Uh, of course, like you know, I'm not a Falco player, so you would have to see what a Falco player does in that situation. But that's not hard to find, right? You just literally look up like what Mingo or like what any good Falco does, and just be like, oh, okay, this is what happens when they land down mm -hmm. here on Sheik at like 56 or whatever. Yeah, so maybe even turn around up till. Yeah. Turn around up till it sounds good. And then, so then, like, he lands here, he tech rolls in, but you're like, ah, he's over here. I gotta shine over here. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is kind of just, like, you played this whole sequence kind of, like, on autopilot instead of just, like, considering uh, where he was gonna, gonna go. Because, like, after this, I mean, he's popping up, so obviously he's gonna have to tech. If you had been willing to, like, tech chase instead, then you could have gotten a shine or an aerial, or second down air on him tech rolling this way, right? Uh huh. So yeah, this definitely looked like a big autopilot spot for you. Yeah, right here I should down smash every day of the week. Right? Yeah, down smash covers the whole platform. Uh, the up tilt's reasonable, but yeah, I, I do think down smash and forward smash are really good there. Nice up air. Oh, I almost got him with that. Yeah, see this? See this? See? Everybody does it. Uh-huh. I feel like I can't fucking punish him when he does it, though. It feels like he... Like, I get... No, I could have shined out a shield. Yeah, you definitely could have shined out a shield. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, he landed, like, inside me that time. But usually he does, like, a little drift back, and I feel like I can't do anything. Yeah. I mean, but you blocked it, so, like, you could have even nared, you know? Uh-huh. He's at 40, and he's mid-air. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, whoops. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh, that's less fine. Uh, so let's talk about this angle then. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you you could have probably angled to grab the ledge, right? Yeah. Or uh, yeah. At the very it, least, it, that's a tough angle. Or at the very least, like you could have picked like an angle like this, so to, to like go around forward tilt. Because I think like what are the obvious options for Sheik here? For probably forward tilt and down smash. Yeah. And they both like so forward tilt's like right here. And then down smash is like right here. So it's like you could have like picked like an upward angle like this to fall onto ledge. Just something to think about. Uh -huh. Like obviously the laser off stage was quite unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We could have acted a little bit better after that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, that was like the worst angle I could have picked. Okay, right there I should have scrubbed the ledge, but 
Nice, so that's much more active. You see, even yeah. though you missed this, this is much more active. Like, right here, you played more, a lot more cognizantly of, like, the tech percents. This is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, you were just, like, a little bit slow uh, dashing out of this. And then you missed your dash back. Right? You did mean to dash back here, right? Um... I don't know. Okay. So I really this, don't know. Okay, so this is all, this is something that's really important. Uh, you need to, like... I mean, you need a dash before you do your aerials whenever you do your tech chases. Because this mm -hmm. is, like, a huge leading cause of missing, uh, like, just, like, combo falls. It's just like, oh, I, like, jumps, jumped instantly and then just tried drift. But all you need to do is, like, even if you dash for just one frame, then you'll get the dash on that time. So it's really important to just get the dash so that you can connect it. You can see here how, like, if you had dash to the right first before doing this back air, it's probably going to hit him. Uh huh. So it's really important to get this dash. Hmm. Nice grab. Uh, that's ah. nice. nice. Lunch. All right, that worked. Could have just down tilted, but this worked. And... Oh, that was back here. Let's see. Man, I'm so surprised. Kind of that didn't work. That backwards center didn't work. I mean, whenever you did this, so did you mean to back air here instead of doing this back? No, air? no, no. I d I definitely meant to down air. Okay. But I th I think. Back air probably, I think back air would have covered him in the air better. Down air covers him on the ground better. But yeah, back, I guess in hindsight, down air back might air be slightly better. higher reward here, which is like I think it's reasonable to down air. But uh, I mean, so it's like, so this is another one of those spots where I really want to ask, like, so did you think this down air was going to hit him? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I totally thought this down air was going to hit him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, do you think that this down air missed because? you thought it was going to hit him and you were wrong? Or do you think that uh, this down air missed because you just, like, fucked up your drifts? Because those are two different problems, right? I think I thought it was going to hit him. Okay. So it seems like you have a lot of spots where it's just, like, you think something's going to work uh, one way and then it's, like, it just doesn't. So you might have to, like, consider your understanding of, like, where your moves or like where people are going to be. Mm -hmm. Nice, good crouch. That was what I was talking about, where you don't have to shine necessarily, right? Oh, uh, that's not tilt. Yeah, that's definitely an input error. <laughs> that's nice. I think you got runoff aerial here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're attacking, so that's kind of rough. Tech in right there uh, would have been a lot better. Though. Nice. So you can just do this laser and then, yeah, and then just like see how it reacts to getting laser there. Ah, uh, down smash is so bad. <laughs> and then, no, that laser helped yeah. him so much. <laughs> I was like, hey, come hit me. That was a back air. Not yeah, a you had so you had a, a lot of input errors so far this game, but uh, let's see, what was the one before? Like right here, where you just like, uh, where you went for the back air on the miss tech. If you had tech, if you had been aware that he was going to like be in a tech situation, just get knocked down, then you could have done a tech chase here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is good coverage. But we kind of flub a lot. Uh, I guess you were just like trying to shine back here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to mix it. And sometimes he's a little bit too high percent, but sometimes when the DI straight up with that, I get enough air. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I think that's fine. It was just an input error. Nice. That was okay. de I'm definitely meant to wave dash out of shield, but. Yeah. So you could have wave dash out of shield and shined that, or you could have. 
down air, like you could have jumped a little earlier, right? You were just slow. And that's something you can definitely something you can practice in Uncle Punch. You just set a sheet computer to uh, down smash your shield, and uh -huh. you practice that, that punish. Yeah, I've I've actually have practiced that a lot. Yeah. Nice. All right, so we could have picked a we could have picked a better option here, right? Just yeah, like sometimes the, the laser, there. sometimes the laser catches them falling from the onto tech. Oh, I think the platformer is probably a little bit too low for that. Uh -huh. I mean, if you, even if you laser him out of the air, like I don't think you necessarily. I don't know. You might get laser down tilt there. Actually, you probably do. But this would have been the spot where, like, you know, your shine, your shine thing was really good, or you could have mm -hmm. just done your back air differently, right? Like, look how far in you did this back air. You even just like full drifted to the right. Uh huh. You controlled your back air a little better, then maybe you can like land right here instead. Yeah, I might have been able to even reverse him too and like mess up his DI. Yeah, or you could have like so like you know you do this like back air, you do like a, a weird down air. And you land like right here, and then if he also attacks, you just forward smash his ass. Mm -hmm. I think you gave him a little bit like too much room here. Uh, so like, I think his smack air is good, like obviously totally safe. And then right here, probably just like instead of dashing this way. I like to think like, oh, what happens if like you had held position like, just like stayed right here where my mouse mm -hmm. is? It's like probably pretty good because uh, okay. So what does Sheik do to get out of the corner at this point? Uh, she's probably scared to run forward because like she might get up tilted, right? That's something that happens after back back air all the time. So she might mm -hmm. go to the side platform, but then like, what happens if you just uh, just auto cancel back air and then you auto cancel back air again, right? Then he has to yeah. like also attack, but this time you're like not going this way and you just kill him. So like I think if you had just held your position after this back here and just stood right here, Sheik is <clears> in <throat> so much trouble. And a lot of yeah. times they're just gonna sit in shield, which lets you like, oh now I'm gonna laser grab your shield, or I'm gonna shine grab your shield. Yeah. And uh yeah, this is definitely a spot where I think you dash back gave too much room. This let him like come down like this. Whereas like if he full hop like this and you are right here. You could have just like easily just like wave dash to right here and be like, all right, if you come down, I'm hitting you. Yeah. I'm also surprised I won. I thought I lost in all the games I sent you, but yeah, I mean, yeah. whatever. Oh yeah, no, I I probably meant to send you send you an FD game instead of FOD. Oh, that's Because I I, I kind of suck on FD for chic. But... Oh, nice. Try. Yeah. I get just I get destroyed this game also. It's like the first two stocks are just freebies, and then he wins the game with two stocks. All right. So <laughs> let's look at so let's look at this uh, platform aerial situation that he's about to do. Right here, he down airs. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even ledge cancel, but you're just like kind of up tilting nothing, and he just comes off uh -huh. and hits you. Right. This is definitely this is like another prime example of like. A platform aerial spot that people just do constantly which is like mm -hmm. they will land on the platform with an aerial and then they'll run off or they'll shield drop with a second aerial uh-huh it's just like if you think about it like this first aerial is really just like telegraphing that's like just like a classic like oh feels good to hit buttons kind of thing right right right, right. totally but really this first aerial is just telegraphing to you it's like Hey, I'm about to shield drop with an aerial, dude. Uh -huh, you better uh -huh. get ready. This is something that Magi used to like murder people at now for. Like Willie and Mitty in particular will always just like do this like nair on the platform and then immediately shield drop nair after it. And Magi's like, oh okay. And she just like waits underneath and then shines them. Yeah. 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 Something to really be aware of. Cause like look how slow that is once you know that it's it's a thing, right? It's just like, oh man. It's so bad. Yeah. So like well how do how do I punish the back here? Do I run him with a shield? Do I like I guess it just feels like really awkward to try a dash dance punish any of Sheik's aerials because they just have like no landing lag. Oh, I definitely like shielding in the specific situation you are at. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's what that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> 
Ow. Uh, alright. Word. Alright. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. And it feels better because and it is better, don't get me wrong, because you're like, you know, you're ledge canceling it. But uh -huh. it really is the same thing. Yeah, like even right here where he just like gets up here and he does this aerial. Mm -hmm. Oh guess what's coming next. So it was that was that a good job on me to block that and then dare afterwards? Yeah, I thought that was fine. Okay. I, again it just feels like I just get like nothing off of it. Like for yeah. punishing him coming down from here. A lot like, of the times, you know, especially uh, at like lower percents where or where it's just like uh, sometimes you get a hit and then it isn't like quite a good, quite a, a true opening. So you have to just like play another mix up after that in order mm -hmm. to like get your real combo started. Right. And I get. I guess that might be why I'm so bad at that situation because i like you get no direct punish off of it so i'm just like oh whatever yeah so the key there know. really is like under first you understand that like oh okay we're about to i'm not in true punish mode yet i'm about to play a second mix up here one that but it's one that mm -hmm. like i'm favored in you know right like clearly if you just hit them with the down air then you're limiting their range of options and you're also influencing the way they want to play after it. Most of the time they just want to like either mash something or they want to get away as quickly as possible. They're acting defensively. So based off of that, uh, then you can just, I mean, you're just like favored in the next mix up. Right. But, but basically, uh, yeah, it still is a mix up. You just have to like recognize that and know which of your hits are going to lead to advantage mix-ups and which of them are going to lead to true combos. Okay. Oh, that sucks. Should just side beat. This is really I mean, scrubby back here, by the way. <laughs> like, you just like... I mean, you could have just like, DI'd this away, and then you would have been fine, right? But you really wanted uh -huh. to double jump out and then mash a hitbox. Uh-huh. Well, like, the double jump out worked, right? I could have just gone to the top Yeah, platform. even after double jumping out, like, you're okay. Like, it, this is so yeah. greedy. I actually see Josiah do this all the time, where he'll just like... Mash out a double jump and then back air them, like, and land like this. Just like, you know, you could have just gone right here and you would have been completely fine. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely like, once you double jumped, uh, basically, like, uh, you decided ahead of time, you're like, I'm double jumping and pushing a hitbox. But mm -hmm. realistically, really, the it, it's more like you could have, like, double jumped and then looked at him and then been like, is putting a hitbox a good idea right now, or should I just escape? And a lot of times, escape is a lot better than like mm -hmm. mashing the hitbox like this. And it's right. really hard just because the game goes so fast. But uh, really, that's just like while you're double jumping, you're way up there. So it's not like you have mm -hmm. anything else to do. You know, you may as well just check out yeah. whatever they're looking at. I might have been scared of me coming at, like, might have been scared of him like coming at me again. And like tried to like do some kind of like, yeah, like that. I think I was drifting away. Out. Yeah. Yeah. But like you can see how you actually just like drifted back in. You actually. Oh drifted yeah, back yeah, in yeah. For this. Like, I did. I did drift back in. Yeah, yeah. So like you're going to the right. You're going to the right. Oh no! Now we're falling basically straight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I don't want to land on that platform. I want to hit him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you just get punched. Yeah. Okay. So again, this is this is chic players. <laughs> chic players always do this thing out of the corner. They go to the side platform like this, and then they come down. Justin mm -hmm. does this too. If you look for it, uh, you will get. Oh it. my god! And I just flop near. 
I don't punish yeah, him at all. So... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was. Yeah, I mean, this is a perfect example of, like, he's literally just, like, standing outside of the threat range, waiting for you to, like, fall fall down with an aerial, which you obligingly do. Uh-huh. Right? Like, I mean, he, even like, then, I could have punished him. Like, he did the, the, the fall-off, and I... I, I go to the top platform yeah so like maybe you like messed up or something and you fall out yeah there, hopefully and then I you're really right did. here and he's like literally <laughs> blatantly walking to the left and yeah. you're just like i did an aerial platform it's time to shield drop an aerial yeah and so of course he turns around he's so far you. away yeah. he, he had enough time to walk he didn't even he walked from the center of yoshi's all the way to under the platform yeah, and this is like the exact type of like platform aerial I'm talking about, where it's just like, I mean, really, uh, let's go back one more time. We don't need to watch this too much anymore. This is a perfect spot where if you just like shield dropped and you lasered right here, you probably destroyed him because he's like uh -huh. reading this and he'd probably dash right here and then get hit by a laser and then you'd destroy him. You'd like laser near or laser down here, down at down him. Uh huh. Oh, laser would have been so good. <laughs> yeah. Nice. A little slow on that. Should drop. Oh my god, I jab. So, yeah. yeah, now you right, can you can you go back? Okay, yeah, yeah. I I like block his F told or something, right? Let's yeah, see. you did. Okay, okay. Yeah, I have this situation I hate so much. Um, let's see. Right here. Yeah. I I think I asked my drive about this already, and I'm just supposed to, like, wave dash away. I think. Okay. I mean, I trust what she said more than anything I think. I mean, yeah, because I don't have, uh... It's like, I... I, I can't, yeah, I, I can't, like, spaced. dare... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if, if I shielded, like, right inside, um, yeah, then I could have, like, like dared right or whatever. You get there, right? Right. But, like, if it's spaced, then probably wave dash away, shoot a laser, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, you see how she just used away. Yeah. Yeah, I just need to get yeah, used to that. It's, it's just so shitty that someone yeah. can, like, just hit my shield like that. Yeah, it's the same thing with, like, Falco, though, right? Where he does drift away aerials. It's just like, eh, you just need to know. Yeah, that's true. My character has bullshit too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's literally the exact same thing as Falco does with like drift back stairs and in back airs. So yeah. yeah you, you were just like kind of doing stuff off of stuff now, right? <laughs> I don't know what that you're was. Just, it really feels like you're autopiling a lot. In this yeah, game, where you're just yeah, like yeah. kind of doing stuff off of stuff. You know, like, again, like, you could really stand to read the side platform here. Like, dude, uh -huh. against against Sheik players and, like, Sheik players and Spaceys, just, like, don't be afraid to just, like, read this side platform sometimes. Because they do it all the time. So, like, should I, should I try to meet Sheik up there? Like, or, like, catch her as she's trying to run off with an up air or catch the aerial before it comes out? I could do, or any of the above. Yeah, all of like... those are acceptable. It really depends on how you want uh -huh. to play it. But while I was uh -huh. talking about it, it was just like, literally just like, be like, all right, dude, I lasered you. You're coming up here. And then uh -huh. just, just be like, it just like, right. just, just fucking full hop near this. <laughs> right. And the first step of that is to not shoot that second laser after the first one hits the shield. Yeah, uh, I think the laser is like pretty low reward here. Uh, you could have you could have just like nared here and uh, it would have caught him. But I mean, obviously that loses him just like chilling down here and then he can up air here but it just depends to like to what what degree you're willing to like make a read like that and to what degree you're willing to react and all of that in my opinion is really up to like personal taste because right. a lot of it is just like well your reward if you get the snare here is he probably dies and that's like pretty good you know it's like you may call it a 50 50 but it's like Half the time, the other dude just dies, and uh, the other half of the time, it's like, ah, you might get fucked up, but you also might be okay. Uh, right. Whereas if you chose a more conservative option, which is like, you know, shooting this laser and then staying here, letting her come to the platform and be like, okay, I'm going to play this mix-up now, where she's on the side platform, I'm down here. 
you're probably still favored, but it's a lot harder for you to, like, immediately kill off of it, right? Because, uh-huh. you know, she can, like, she could, like, she'll drop back, or she could, like, throw needles, and it's like, sure, you could win if you, like, stood here, and then you just, like, up tilt, and she tries to run off fair lazily, and then you can uh-huh. like, up tilt, back air, up tilt, up air, hair off to the top. Uh, yeah, but I feel like those like hard reads, steps. I feel like I need to, like, make those hard reads. I feel like what I'm missing against Sheik is kind of that initiative to set the pace of the game myself and, you know, make him scared to be on the platform in the first place. Yeah, and how you want to play that play that situation, in my opinion, is just totally your call. Uh-huh. But you, it is something that, like, at least you should be aware that the options exist so that you're right. able to actually make that call instead of being like, uh, I don't know, I'm going to shoot a laser from the middle of the stage because mm-hmm. I don't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, you could have shot dropped. Yeah, that was a shield drop in the air, a shield drop back here. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Hey, you're both playing lazy kinda lazy now, just like, oh, you know, just He's just like oh, like throw needles at nothing and then like <laughs> yeah. run off in back air. So you're both just playing kinda lazy now. Oh my god, what? I definitely felt like you were going to hit him. What happened? You got hit by needles? And then he just ran off an up air? Oh, you actually killed <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. That makes sense. Ah! Okay, yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, what? <laughs> needles hit the platform. <laughs> Again, oh missed another shield drop opportunity, by the way. Uh huh. He did this. This is the second time, by the way. Let's back up some more. This is the second time, by the way, that we did, uh. That we just double jumped, that he just double jumped with back air. Let's see if I rolled back far enough. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Alright, here it comes. Double jump back yeah, air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I did try to whiff punish it, but I picked. Yeah, you picked it down or too a little sl- bit too slow. You could have you yeah. just, like, shield dropped, right? Yeah. And keep yeah. in mind, this, this back airs are basically equivalent to, if you remember you doing that double jump uh, back air earlier that went up here and then you died mm-hmm. from it. That's This is the yeah, same yeah, yeah. thing. It's just like, ah, I want to hit him. Uh, I'm just going to double jump and press an aerial. So yeah, he's, he's, he's totally about to do it again on the left side, where he just like does the same back air. So, uh... Right here, you hit him. Alright, we're over here. And then, oh, you just double jump the back airs. Yeah. Oh my god. You ready? I can't, bl- I can't yeah, believe I don't take the stock. I can't believe I'm about to die. <laughs> oh my god. I'll see All you later. Right, <laughs> Alright, so that's that. But yeah, that was like pretty good games to review. Um, it's probably been right about an hour, so I'm probably gonna call it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, you got some good notes out of that. And uh, yeah, yeah. So do you think I should add, any, add anything to the notes besides the bad aerials, um, shield pressure, and recovery? Yeah, I would say proactively look to like punish those bad aerials yourself, and uh, probably like. Probably like just like study uh study the matchup, you know. I think like you know, like that side platform thing we talked about, you know? Uh that would be a big thing for you to like be willing to work into your play. Just like read someone trying to jump out of the corner instead of like fighting out grounded. Uh uh-huh. a lot of the way you play, I think, is it's like it's kind of funny. I think it, it almost feels like it's geared to beat like Josiah because it's just like, you know, or like a Marth player in general. Because like I think if you're a Marth player, then you're a lot more likely to just like stand on the ground in the corner and then just like block or like try to or try to like fare your way out. Mm-hmm. But a lot of mm-hmm. other characters will like 
take to the live side platform like that and have right. kind of like a trickier approach out. And that's definitely why I play Falco. Like my, that's my favorite part about the characters that like when I'm on the ground, I like get to control the space like that, and like they can't just you know dash dance forever in the corner. Like I get to yeah, you get to shoot them and be like, no, you have to do something. Right. Yeah. Right. So definitely, like I, I would consider like how you want. I, I, I think you should consider how you want to approach the situations where your opponent is cornered, and you have the center. Uh, a lot of times, you know, sometimes you just you just gotta go in, and as long as like you don't get shield grabbed, a lot of times it's just okay. Like uh-huh. it's only really bad if you get grabbed. Uh, yeah. And a lot of times it's like they hit you away, then you're still just like in the center and it's like not the worst thing in the world so that's something i would put down and i would say you know if you want to study this matchup like look at how you know the good falco players play it you know you could look at ginger you could look at mango you could look at magi sets against drefin as well uh but don't only watch like magi versus drefin or like ginger versus drefin or like good player versus good player. What I want you to specifically do is, like, try to find those good Falcos players, like, pools matches against Sheiks, and mm-hmm. really watch what they do in those spots. Because when it's, like, good player versus good player, there's, like, 18 levels of, like, crazy bullshit going on that mm-hmm. is really hard to fully understand. So I think, like, you should really watch good player versus bad player just like watch how they beat down on people worse than them to see kind of like mm-hmm. what the level one is uh right that's just gonna like make things really hard for them to deal with i've i've like i don't think i've ever looked at another player like i don't think i've ever analyzed another player to try to help my like help myself so is there like a specific way i, I should go about it? should i just like watch the match and just like just try to take in specific things? Should I take notes the same way I am now? Uh, that's a like, good question. I think that, you know, we're talking specific. You should go in, go in mind with very specific questions you want answered. So, like, we're saying, like, okay, so Sheik is at high percent in the corner, and Falco is at, uh, is, you know, at a lower percent in the middle of the stage. Or we're at these relative stage positions. How does Falco stop Sheik from coming out of the corner? What I would do is I would go and look at this VOD and I would literally skip around it until I see a spot. I would just, you know, just like tap right on the key on the keyboard mm-hmm. until I see the specific spot where okay, the Falco players in the middle, the Sheik players in the corner, how are they playing this situation? Mm-hmm. And I'd make a note of it. And then I'd just find the next time it happens. Find the next time it happens. Because whenever right. you watch a VOD, like, the whole way through, if you do as analysis, a lot of times you'll end up getting kind of sidetracked. And you don't answer your original question. and yeah. Or it's just, like, it's really easy to get caught up, like, just watching as a spectator. So uh-huh. I like to go in with, like, a specific question I'm trying to answer in mind. And being like, yeah, uh, I'm going to skip around until I find this situation happening and i'm going to see what they do and just try to steal Mm. that and so that's that's so i can pick that's for two like one so i can see the options they're picking and two like kind of get a feel for the timing based on just watching it yeah and then once you have ideas of those things uh then you can just take those and then try to apply them to your own practice Uh uh-huh okay yeah cool all right thanks howard this yeah. has been very helpful. No I appreciate problem. it. Yeah. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions or you want to do another analysis. And yeah, we'll get it set up. All right. Great. All right. Thank you. Peace.